Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be. It is good to have you back with us in the workshop of Woodspun Round today. I uh, got a, 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 well, I'm going to take up Steve uh, SK Crafts, uh, I get just hashtag week project. We're going to do a, a Christmas inspired uh, sweet bowl, so, uh, or candy bowl, if you're here in the, in the States. Um, I thought that was the strangest thing first time I heard it called a sweet bowl, but that's okay. I understand what it is. Uh, anyway, I've got uh, got a pretty good crew with me today. Bring them up so you can see them. There's Mark Beckett. There's Wayne Clasper. There's Ruby Claire, and we're glad to have all you guys. And I'm going to throw you back in the background real quick like <laughs> it is good to have all of you with us today. Uh, I've got a piece Where's of pear. Excuse me? What did you say, Mark? Oh, I just no, I just say hello, everyone. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, I've got a piece of pear. Ah, that's what I thought I was going to do. Forgot to move my camera back. Ah, there I go again. Surely not. No, you're still fine here. Yeah. yeah, it looks fine from here. There we go. All right. I had uh, YouTube on in the background. I'm sorry. Uh, I meant to turn that off. Anyway, uh, got a piece of pear here. It is uh, 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 almost six inches in diameter, uh, three inches at the widest point. It's a, it's a half log. It's been cut round. I'm just pinching between centers for right now. So I'm going to get started on this. And uh, one of the other three are going to read out who's in the chat. Let us know who's there. Nice oh, one, Mark. That's going to be. Well volunteered. Oh, what a surprise. Right. Reading from the YouTube participants list then, in alphabetical order, we've got Albert Dawson, Brano Tornero de Madeira, Chisney from Wood Creations, Clint Wood Dancers, James Crawford, Rob from Kingsborough Braces, Nick Jews, Mike Evans, sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to say it like that. Mick Jews, Mike, Mike Jews. Evans, Mick Jews, Old Man River Wood Turner, Tony Glen Gove Woodcurt, Woodworks, Elijah Woodshed, Wooden Barrel, Where's All the Wood Butcher? And uh, we've got. Is there anybody else is in that I've missed? James Crawford, Tony Glen Gove. And I think. Mike Evans. I think I've mentioned everybody who's in the list. Lucy's just come in. Yeah. Hello, Lucy. Hello, everyone. Yep, that's it. Hello, everybody. Welcome along to Doc's show. It's good to have everybody yeah. here today. Nice to, nice to see Mick Jews in. The person who has nearly made Klingsport go out of business because of the amount of brazers he uses for nothing. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out his trade secret. <laughs> yeah, big pockets, Lucy. Eh, uh, Sorry, Ruby. Okay, yeah. I've been called worse. Don't worry about it, Wayne. Paul Hutton yes. is just doing this. Hi, Paul. I've got a. a you uh, said like you stole it. You did. <laughs> yeah. You did. <laughs> I, are you going to be coloring this tonight, Doug? I am. At least the bowl part I am. Excellent. This is. I'm actually planning on doing a lidded bowl. Um, I've already got a finial for the lid, so we don't have to worry about that section of it. Make sure you do a wood turner's fit on the lid, that way the kids can't get to the candy. <laughs> Rob's asking you to get a color it's yellow and black. <laughs> I thought about it. I well, those, about are, it. Those, are, those are Mark's favorite colors. So you better I know, know, I know. Whatever. Ray, Raymond Wise has joined us. Hello, oh, Raymond. I still, I was going to ask, I was going to ask a question, and I, I was going to ask it yesterday, in fact. But I have totally forgotten what the question is. I'm good at that. Yeah, I know. I, 
seems like I do that more and more here lately. Hey, but welcome to I've, our world. Really. I've, I've discovered that I've got to the time in life where I have to start making lists. Well, yeah. Yeah, but... But then, I mean, I'm, I'm make a list for when I go shopping and then leave it on the, the dining room table and try to remember yeah. what I've written. Oh, my gosh, Wayne. <clears throat> I went, I had to take some more Christmas trees down to my two stores that are local. And while I was out, I had a, a friend who placed an order. I was going to put it in the mail while I was out. So I go down and I took my trees got them delivered, came back, pulled into the post office, could not find that little package for nothing. Well, I, it was right where I left it. Spindles workshops in by Spindles. Even Spindles. Hey, Louie. Hey, Louie. Hey, Louie. Been a while since I've seen you, Louie. It's good to have you. All right, just getting the... I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I need to be making a tenon on here is what I need to be doing. I guess maybe if you start with deciding what size you want your tenon. Yep. I was right close to it. No, I was starting to make my, my final foot is what I was starting to do. Need to be making a tenon, and I'm trying to make my final foot. He says he's been MIA. I understand. I was MIA last so week, tell you what. Oh, Zed, hey, Zed. Hey, Zed. I said that, and I'm hey, thinking, hey, in the world. All right, this does have a, a, a bit of a crack running through it. In fact, it's got two or three small cracks, and I'll probably address those here in just a minute. I want to get my outside shape fairly well finalized. Well, I think I can one-up you on the foot part, Doug. I put the tool on the wood this morning and stopped and looked at it and realized why it wasn't cutting. I hadn't turned the lathe on. <laughs> hadn't turned all oh, ruby i've never done that i've had it in reverse before yeah i've had it in reverse be before and sharpened every just about every tool i had in the worktop and they still wouldn't cut <laughs> yeah yeah they won't cut worth a nothing now rob from things said that's what mobile phones are for you take a picture of the list you made as you know, you'll forget to take it. Well, the thing is, Rob, half the time, I go out of the house and forget the phone as well. That's it, guys. We just got to put it on charge. <laughs> All right. That's more like it. That's more like it. I'm going to give myself just a little bit more tin in here. You know, I just thought, and nobody said anything, y'all probably would have enjoyed a overhead view. Now that we're almost done. Yeah, the other view was quite fine. Yeah, you just couldn't see the shape taking place there. Just a touch with a skew, just to... I'm not really giving it a, a uh, dovetail, just a slight undercut there so that it grips a little easier it's got that beak on it so just going to take a look at it before i start sanding um i do think i'm going to put a little glue in the crack a couple of cracks here just because yeah you might as well <sighs> try and stop them before they get carried away yeah exactly try this bottle of glue i don't know if this one's going to be any count or not this one's about half. It's about empty to begin with. And it may be. No, it's got a little glue in it. Yes, yeah, so Rob's just said we need the club together to get win a self-tattoo kit. 
Yeah, with the size of me, Rob, I'll have I'll have enough space for lots and lots of lists. Let's see that one and this one. And I Lucy could be said, if, if she forgets her uh, phone, she can't pay for the shopping. You know, you know that's, that's a feature that I don't have on my phone on purpose. I, I think by, I've got it on my phone, but I, I never use it. And by the same token, I don't have uh, on my credit cards where you just or debit cards where you just touch the screen. Uh huh. And the reason is my bank manager pointed out that if you ever lost your phone or your cards, it would be very easy for someone to go on a spending spree. Yes, if they can get into your phone. And some phones are not hard to get into. <laughs> oh, dear, Rob. Sorry, sorry, Doug. I, I wasn't laughing at you there. I was laughing at what Rob put in. Give that just half a second to go off, and then we're going to take a huh. cleaning cut there. Doug, Rob put in the breaking news in Scotland. Man was arrested for dropping his trousers in a Tesco to check check if he needed sprouts <laughs> oh mercy uh, i thought those jokes were on zed's channel i don't they know about, i don't know about these englishmen <laughs> I Did we get them? I think we did. I think we did. Hi, Fred. Hello. Hey, Fred. Hi, Fred. All right. Well, I don't know if anybody up there, she is in today because I've, I've seen her name. I don't know if anybody follows um, Wooden Burl, which is Haley on mm -hmm. Instagram, but she's been putting out some very nice stuff on Instagram at the moment. Oh, well, that's good to that, know. Yeah, that is Wooden Burl, all one word on Instagram, I believe. You know, it's absolutely amazing the, the quality of work that you start seeing anymore coming across. Like 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you'd never have seen stuff like we're seeing today. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think that's because sort of um, now a, a lot of people, let's start from the beginning, a lot of people back in the 50s and 60s were putting out some absolutely exceptional work, uh, whether it be holoforms, whether it be colouring, and uh, think uh, new ideas and things like this, but they didn't have the outlet to actually show them. Right. Where, whereas today, there is the outlet to show them. Yeah, back oh, in the early 60s, uh, we didn't have uh, computers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like this. Hey, Chris. Why did I say that? Lad? That's only because you're that much younger than we are, Mark. I was born in the 60s. I'm a child of the 60s. Mark, you're 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 a few decades too late to catch us. Well, I was born in the sixties. He's just a, alive before we he, stood on the moon. He, he's just a young young springster, isn't he, Wayne? A young, um, much young, a, a, a young puppy. Well, yeah, com compared to me, yeah, he is. Well, compared to both of us. Well, I, I wasn't going to say that, Ruby. That that, that would have been um, not very nice to include you hey, in that. Yeah, but you know what? I'm proud that I reached this age. Do you know how few people that I grew up with are still around? 
Yes, there is that. It's all that sand exhaler. It's keeping you alive, Ruby. Yeah, that could be. It's holding me together. It's holding you together, yeah. Rob now, says Rob, but starting in. No, go on, yeah. How are you doing? No, no, go on, Mark. You're you're fine. You started. Uh, Rob from Thingsport said they're starting an Instagram in January. He refused to get involved. He's got too many projects to do next year. Said, I'm not even <laughs> reading your jokes out. They're terrible. Uh, Haley has just said, oh, thank you, Wayne, about um, pushing her um, Insta. The earring holder won the novice competition at the Wood Turnham Club. Although she was the only entry. Hey, it doesn't matter, you won. That's right. Would have been a right signal if you'd come second. That's true. That would have been heart wrenching. Okay, we've got it sanded to 320 now. I'm going to add a little bit of color to this. There we go. A little forest green. I'm going to do it with an airbrush just because I've got it here in handy. There goes my other bottle of glue. Okay, I'll find it in a minute. Hey, when I can't find stuff. Anyway. <laughs> ah, it's full of dust, of course. I don't know where that came from. I only spent an entire day yesterday cleaning the shop. That's where it so, came from. Exactly. Came off the uh, ground. Ward, it's come in. Good evening, Ward. Hello, Ward. Hi, Ward. You can send us some uh, warm weather anytime you feel like it, Ward. Uh, Alex is asking if you found your ring, Doug. No, Alex, I did not. Um, I spent eight plus hours looking for it, handful by handful of shavings, and I did not find it. So uh, it either rolled off somewhere other than where I cleaned, or it's a goner. Um, I can't imagine that I missed it. Um, I was literally on the ground, on the floor, picking up a handful of shavings and, and crushing it and rolling it around till I had nothing but a little bit of dust and before I would dump it and uh, I did not find it. So, oh, well, I may find it in the future. If I do, I'll end up with two because I'm planning on being at the uh, jewelry store probably first thing tomorrow. Either that or I'll get a silicone, silicone ring so I don't have to take it off in the shop. Hey, Ward's saying that it's 57 degrees Fahrenheit there today. Um, Ruby, are you talking, when you say zero, are you talking centigrade or Fahrenheit? Fahrenheit. Mm. Well, that's cold. Yes, it is. The last, oh, the last two days have been um, very frigid. Right. Um, Haley is asking, whilst I have so many experts here, can you share your thoughts on record power versus Vic Mark lathes, please? Okay, Vic Mark um, is a Rolls Royce of lathes. Um, record power, uh, a four door of Vauxhall. It it depends on the size of record power lathe that you're looking at to compare it to. Well, I would sorry, start, I, I, I would disagree there. I, I there's, would there's still no say, comparison. Yeah, it, 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 it's a hell of a lot better quality. Um, it doesn't really matter what size of lathe you're talking about. Big marks are just better quality. From the 150 up to the 320. Is it 320? Yeah. They, they're just the small lathes are professional standard. Big lathes are professional standard. 
they're, they're, everything's rated, high rated, good bearings, good motors, solid. Thick marks are probably, like Wayne said, the Rolls Royce of Lays. Whereas there's nothing wrong with record power. Oh, no. They're, they're not no. rated there is, to uh, that standard. Yeah, you're right, Mark. There's nothing wrong with record power lays at all. They are very, very good lays. But um, Vic Mark are really top of the line. And Pete from Twisted Trees has just come in. Good evening, Pete. Hey, I guess it depends, too, on how much you're willing to spend on a lathe. Well, yep. I mean, that, that's, a, that's the thing with, with anything. I mean, I mean, if you want a, a big bull-turn lathe, you could spend thousands on uh, VB36. You could spend thousands on um, an XL, um, an Axminster, a big Axminster. All all these go um, they're all robust one way. I was gonna say um, robust for sure. That's a lot of money. You, you know the, the the thing with Vicmark, as far as I'm concerned, is is that they've they've been around been around for a hell of a lot of years, and the quality is all, all, always there. Well, you th you have to look at too what kind of turning you're going to do and how much. Well, that, exactly, yeah. Like, that's why, for example, I've got, well, what, six lathes? And for doing my spindle work and um, commercial stuff, I use my Powermatic, mainly because of the size. Um, but then I can turn around, and if I want to do finials and something else, I can go to one of the smaller lathes. If I wanted to do a very wide platter um then i'd be looking at my stubby leg mainly because no, i can do a three-foot platter on it yep stubby there, there's another good make hey yeah. wood fast as well the wood fast um a very good make although i think now they're made in china not australia uh, Mark, Mark, yes, Mark. Hello, Mark, babes. Hey, hey Mark. Mark. Or should we say morning, babes? Um, okay, he's escaped to the workshop while Madam, that's Jennifer, is doing the tree decorating. And is she using intrinsic colours or is she using Joe Sonia's? Please, I'm just says. A thick mark VL300 would look so great next to a VB36. Very yeah. Cheap. Well, I think I think first it would look great, Pete, if you doubled the size of your shop. So yeah, I, I, said, I don't need to double the size of my shop. I just need to take a hundred percent of the mess out. <laughs> if only we knew somebody who recently doubled the size of their workshop. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't know anybody like that much. And Tom is right. asking you, Mark, how many layers have you got in your new shop? I already think two. We have two more on the way. There would be four in total. Excellent. Uh, Pete, Pete realizes he needs to triple the size of his, his shop. If everybody looks down to uh, to Doug's left there, you can see some nice um, flowers on a, on a platter. Funny you should mention that. I was noticing them. <laughs> That was actually a demo after I had done uh, a, a string pull piece or two from what I saw on somebody's channel on YouTube. Some guy called Wayne the Woodturner. Oh, I, I, I recognize that name. Yeah, I, I gave it a shot and and uh, a couple of people that in the in Wood, Worldwide Woodturner saw it and liked it and wanted to see a demo on it. So I fixed up a piece of plywood and just for a demo on the 
just on the painting technique and uh, it came out quite nice in fact if that wasn't screwed to the wall i'd bring it up here close where you could see it um, i did one there's a horizontal one here that's actually all three colors all at one time excellent andy the valley wood donor is complaining he says good evening all i'm in the middle of the ten thousand piece jigsaw mark sent me <laughs> I didn't send you a jigsaw. It's called packaging. This happens to be shavings. Oh, you haven't done it again, have you? Because I'm doing it to everyone now. Basically, if anybody orders anything from me, don't open it in your living room. Take it outside. <laughs> and, uh, be... do, 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 don't open it while you're in bed either. No, like Jamie did. <laughs> Never forgave me for that. He opened one in bed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Package I sent him in bed, yeah. In he bed, should have known yeah, better yeah. than that. Well, at that time, that was the first time Mark had actually done that. It was rammed. Rammed with shavings, it was. Okay. Like a glitter bomb going off. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we've been forewarned. Absolutely. But it just seems, seems silly to spend money on packing chips that You're harm the environment. Where I've got a floor full of packing material that they can have for free. Uh, I got you. I'm I'm with you. And they can recycle it too. Yeah, exactly. Put a note in there, Mark, saying this is a, a another piece. It's a it's a yeah. Kia kit. This, this or, used to be a bowl. Ikea. This is the inside of the bowl. There you go. Or an You're Ikea bowl, or yeah. The other person you want to be wary of when it comes to packaging is uh, Scott, the blue light turner. Scott, yeah. Yeah, 45 miles of tape. When, when he packages stuff, he packages stuff. It's worse than bloody Amazon, I tell you. Okay. I've got to give myself a little time out here and check my sizing. This is going to be the lid. So I've got to Make sure I don't open this bowl up too big. Ouch. There's a guy on um, Instagram, Svarvolf, he's called. He does the ring doors. And he's mm. done a couple of videos this week. I'm using the skew on a piece of wood solely to produce shavings that he uses in his boxes when he sends somebody a bowl. Hmm. All right. What's his name? Favolf. S V A R. It's Favolf. S V A R F U L. Okay. He has a lot of time on his hands. And Pete says, Mark, that you better put a plastic note written in oil pen. Telling everyone the packaging is environmentally friendly. <laughs> and Lucy's put in that she was she was actually sniffing the shavings to see what they smelled of. Oh, wait, I've sent you the link. Yeah, cheers, Mark. I like I like Jed's comment. I have an ongoing argument with a flat earther. He says he's going to walk off the edge to prove me wrong, but I think he will come around eventually. Oh, God. Excuse my shoulder for just a moment. We can still see what's happening, Doug. You're okay. Yeah, just uh, getting below my, my little ledge there. So now I can go back to hollowing. You see, the shavings would have been beach. It's all I've been turning this week. Beach. 
Now I wish we had some to turn here. Don't forget to check your depth, Doug. Oh yeah, I'm I'm still pretty far away at this moment. Okay, we will cut last through. Okay. For those of you who don't get to see um, community posts on uh, YouTube channels, I am not doing any more lives for the rest of this year. I'm having a, a couple of few weeks away from the World Cup, but I will be back in the new year. I have to recharge the batteries. Yep. Tell you what, I was I was out last week with a family situation. Uh, just called for me to be away from home, and uh, I found that the week was was good for me. Uh, I missed my Tuesday night group. I, I missed. Well, I didn't miss. I was able to join in to Worldwide Wood Turners on Wednesday night, um, but I didn't have anything to show or share with them. But I got to be there um, and had a lot of private messages, uh, people who understood what was going on. So uh, there are just times when we got to take a little bit of a break. Absolutely. Getting a nice curve on the inside here. And before I go any further, I'm going to make Ruby happy. Actually, it's not. It's making, saving my. Uh, saving your face? Well, I just had, oh, here it is. Ah. We got this high tech tool we got to use. Um, right out, Toneo's just pointed out something. Oh, Mark, have, uh, Mark oh. Have, you, have you seen what Doug's using? Hmm. Oh, I knew he'd get <laughs> excited about this. Yeah. It, it's, a proper, it, it's a proper it's depth gauge. If I go back to my top view, you can probably you see, see the gap right there between those two pieces. That's how much room I've got. So I've got, uh, I've still got a half inch of wood there. That's before I get to the end of my tenon or end of the uh, chuck jaws. And then I've got a tenon below that. So we're in grand shape for the shape we're in. Ben's in. Hello, Ben. Hey, Glenn. You do, Ben. Ben, Ben. Can I just point out, Ryan's uh, brought up a, an interesting point. Wayne's just announced that he's not doing any lives till the new year. And can I also say, you've never seen Santa and Wayne in the same room at the same hmm. time. Just Isn't saying. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Strokes you can't give thought. away all his secrets, Mark. I never give away anything. Just, just, just saying. Maybe we could get you to switch back to the other view. Same with that. If I can remember to pick my That's what we wanted in the end view. Just taking a light cleaning cut to kind of finish that up, lessen my sanding a little bit. I'm leaving just a couple of lines there. Go back and pick those up. Now you've started it, Mark. The standard ropes are coming out. Mm. If you ignore them, they'll stop. Okay, mute myself yeah, again while I stay in the inside. I didn't see anything. I just just ignored them. 
Didn't say anything about you being Santa either. Oops, sorry. Ben's going on about some shortbread salted caramel biscuit he's got. Thanks for that, Ben. Cheers. Just, we haven't just got those. Just time you feel, feel hungry, eh? I have discovered a new snack, though. He, he, he didn't make them himself, though. He only made the cup of tea himself. I have discovered a really nice snack. Paprika flavoured um, cheese biscuits. Did you say uh, paprika? Hang, right, hang, hang on. I'm, I'm sorry, Ruby. I've, I've, got to I've got to take this up with Mark. Oh, you have got... Paprika, paprika, paprika flavored it. cheese biscuits. Paprika now, flavored mini cheddars. Right now, are they cheese flavored? Are they paprika flavored? Or mini cheddars with a dusting of paprika. <laughs> it's like flavored coffee. Is it coffee or is it caramel? No, 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 no. I wasn't saying that. But you've got cheese biscuits, which are flavoured with cheese, but the paprika flavoured. Oh yeah, so the paprika flavoured cheese biscuits. Hmm. On another note, Zed says he has an explosive premiere in two hours. Oh. Zed, send me the link, buddy. So I'll put it in the chat. Or just go on YouTube. Oh. Sorry. I yeah, Rob, said, yeah. You know, Rob, Rob has said that's like saying I have an af apple flavored banana. Oh dear. Oh, it's a party. There's the link to Zed's premier later. Cheers, Mark. I want to know if you're a fan of Iron Brew. Who said that? Zed. Um, am I a fan of Iron Brew? It's not that bad. I find it a little bit on the sweet side, to tell you the truth. And Pete says the Japanese would pay a lot for an apple-flavored banana to go with the square watermelons. I wonder, I've, I've, I've been looking for this particular thing for years and years and years. But not long after I started wood turning, um, I saw a video uh, uh, from Japan where they actually put whole logs, uh, sorry, whole trunks of trees into uh, an industrial microwave. And then once it comes out of the microwave, obviously it's very hot with lots of moisture in. And then they put it into a square press. So it presses from the side, it presses from the top, and it actually turns the log or the, or the trunk into a square piece of wood ready for milling. And seeing as how it's been compressed sideways and uh, top to bottom, all the grain goes basically all over the place. And it was uh, exceptional. I found it very, very interesting, and I've never been able to find it again. That, that does sound quite interesting. I have seen where they've been growing watermelons into boxes so that they do come out square. Oh, yeah, 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 they do that, yeah. Ben Jamin says he wants to try Mountain Dew. Well, buy it. It's in shops. There you go. doug has got a can right there for you. That was even diet.
I get oh, more I harassment over Diet Mountain Dew than anything else in the world. All right, I've got a little fuzzy inside my mortise there. I'm going to clean up. This ought to do it. Brian wants to know how the parts of your sander fit together. You know, your quick release. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll show you that here in just half a second. Get this little mortise cleaned up. and Yeah, there we go. Okay, this is a, a great system uh, except for one issue, and I'll tell you that about the issue here in a second. But in the drill, I've got this, this piece. It's a, a mandrel with a plastic piece and it's threaded in the center. On this, this pad has the, the male threads. That's this white piece right here. And it just simply screws in with about a half a twist. Works just great. Give it a half twist the other direction and it's off. The only issue is I cannot spin this in reverse with this system because if I do, it'll, it'll, spin it'll itself. going the wrong yeah. way, it spins it right off. I've tried it and tried it. I cannot make it stay on. There's no set screw. Um, it's all plastic, so a set screw would really wouldn't work. Okay, while we're here, before I change anything else, I'm going to set these Ryan, dividers. Uh, Rob from Grimsboy says, that system is called Quick Lock. Yeah, it is called Quick Lock. You, you get that sort of system a lot with them. Um, in the automotive industry. In the yeah. automotive industry with uh, sort of air tools. Yes. Um, quick Lock or Nylock, um, various names. And I got this from a woodworking company, a wood turning company, in fact. Um, they were getting rid of it. I think they were changing to a different model, maybe. Um, but this particular one they were doing away with. But anyway, I, I use so it. I like some it. Some people call it Rolock. Rolock, yes, yes, that's the name I was looking for a while ago. Um, anyway, so we're still still got the tenon and all that on there. We're good to go. I've got to take this off, this chuck, and put my drive center back in. Reverse. There we go. Uh, Rob, I got your message and everything is good. I have not called those folks yet. I just haven't had the opportunity, but I will be calling them either this evening or maybe tomorrow. Um, was asking Rob about the uh, people to talk to here in the States about Klingspore. I've, I've got to have a discussion so that I know that so that I'm getting what I want. Um, what I've been using for sandpaper works great, but I like to support the community when I can. Rob's been supporting us quite well, and I I'm, I'm, would be happy to support Cling Sport. To totally, yeah, I've got to totally agree with that, Doug. Rob yeah. has been an absolute star over the past day. Uh, I mean, year or so. Yeah. Uh, since since I met him in September of last year. Uh, when we, me and Mark met him in, in September last year, he's been an absolute star. Yep. Uh, contributing to the the uh, Maker's Auction. What a considerable donation that was. And then to jump right on with, with uh, Steve's newest thing. Why am I... Oh. I know what the problem is. So no, yeah, Doug, there's a cling spore store not far from you. Um, if there is, I, I don't remember know. remember visiting it uh, last time I was down in the States. You don't remember where? I would no, go I visit it if I knew where. Dig, probably have to dig out a map. We've got a, we've got a rockler, but I'm not aware of a cling spore in this area. We all right. still didn't. There, now we got it in forward. That'll work. 
Um, yeah, I've got I've got um, Woodcraft and Rockler that are like right across the street from each other, but I'm not aware of a cling spore in this area. Okay, could Todd be. Says, I just don't know of it. Todd says it's in uh, North Carolina. Yes, yes. And that's yeah, not always, exactly my neighborhood. I've a point of stopping in on my way down and back from uh, golfing. There was somebody on, on Carolina. Yeah, there was somebody on Facebook the other day put a um, a small uh, walk around tour of a Clingspore uh, shop in the states. Don't know where it hmm. was. Yeah. But, but Clingspore in the states, uh, it, it's huge. I mean, they've got yes. the yes. stores and everything. Yes. There's yes, an idea for you, Rob. Okay, we just made it round. Now we're going to face it off, get it good and flat. Then I'll make my, I'll make a tenon, actually a double tenon. I want one tenon to go in the chuck and another tenon that'll fit in the bowl. Now, Zed we'll has just it. said, sorry, uh, Doug, Zed has just said, he had a horribly scratched Android tablet screen. He put some Yorkshire grit on it in his sand and drill with a foam pad for 20 minutes, took out 90% of the scratches. There right. you go. The, the next thing you want to try, uh, Zed, is the Yorkshire grit microfine. That will take out the rest of the scratches. Zed, if you were close enough, I've got some here. You'd be welcome to come use. No, Zed's in... Um, yeah, he's a long Oregon. way away from me. <laughs> yeah, he's in Oregon, I believe. Either Oregon or Washington State, one of the two. Archer. That's exactly. gone near perfect. All right. Give myself just a little more tendon. RTC distribution, allmarkbuttery.com, are a things board distributor in Tennessee. Where in Tennessee, Mark? Well, oh, see, now you're asking. Hold on. Uh, well, Tennessee's a big state, you know, from end to end. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Pete just replied to Zed and said, Zed, if you would use Kling Spore 80 grit, you could have taken out 90% of the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I had this. These uh, set. Rob, Rob has just replied that there are two outlets, uh, two outlets in Kentucky. I thought so. All right. Tell me where. Tell me where. Two in Kentucky, that means one's close. Mark's already searching for stuff, so I'll let him do that. Oh, and Rob has just said, check out the list that Mark posted. I, I take it the, the, the link yeah, that's, that Mark that's the posted list. just above. We'll uh, we'll give the various places where the cling sports shops are. Very good, very good. Oh, Doc. All right, let's just. Oh, Doc. Well, I'm here. Team Doc. Oh, Doc, I'm sorry. What's that? Oh, Doc. Oh, Doc. I'm not, sure what that one, I'm not sure I know that one. Okay, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah, the list is on the link I put in. Okay, all right. I'll have to go look. help me remember before I shut it down because once I shut it down, I can't see the stinking chat. I, that just, it kind of drives me crazy. Yeah, you have to wait 24 hours. Yeah, that's probably it. I'm probably not waiting long enough. 
I usually only have to wait about two or three hours before I can uh, bring the, the chat replay yeah, up. That's, that's sure why in the wood chat. <laughs> there are privileges with being the wizard. Finish right. camera then. Oh, you can't There's the other. Ah. Knew there was something wrong a while ago. I did not even have my head stuck tight. Right. Todd, Todd Glenn Cove has just said, I don't believe the list are stores, they are Sunflex vendors. All right. See how much I trust Rob. I didn't even look at the list. I just, he sent me a link and I just threw it straight in the chat. Could have been anything. <laughs> Got to be careful with that these days. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, knowing Rob, it could have been anything. Yeah, Doug, Alex uh, Wurzel has just sent you uh, the link um, for the stores to your chat. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. That's, that's great. I'm, I will get it if it's a messenger. No question. All right. So I've got to do two things here. Um, first off, I want to take my live center out so that for two reasons. So I don't. Oh, I did it again. Less shavings. I got shavings in my quill. Hate that. Rob, send me another link. Good luck, everyone. <clears throat> you know, it's been strange. I have had links sent to me from all sorts of folks here lately uh, and people that know me. And they're not links I want, some of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Doug, why, why are you drilling this hole? <laughs> because there's going to be a finial go into it. All right. And what size drill bit are you using? One quarter inch. The finial is already turned and sized, and it will sit right down in here just beautifully. Run all the way through. Yeah. Good I may be sorry, but yeah, I'm going to <laughs> drill it all the way through. Actually, I'm going to stop right there. Whatever that is, that's where I'm going to stop. It's more than deep enough. I'm probably down in the tenon. All right. Now I'll get that out of the tail stock just so I don't hit my elbow on it. There we go. Yeah. Todd says that the stores are in Winston-Salem, Hickory, Fletcher, and Cary, North Carolina. And I yeah. think the ones in Winston-Salem Salem and Hickory. Yes. I have... I've been in all those towns, like all those towns, but I don't live in North Carolina anymore. Most of those are, they're like mid-state and east. When I lived in North Carolina, I lived in the mountains. What? Were you a hillbilly? Was I a hillbilly? No, I was a redneck. <laughs> I was a redneck I was a red when neck. I lived in the States. Mark, I was a redneck when I lived in the States. Mark, you can tell by his accent that he's not a hillbilly. Well, North Carolina hillbillies are a different breed. Yes, they are. That's now, Rob has just sent Mark a list of Kling Spores woodworking shops. I've already put it in the chat. All right, sorry, Mr. Mark's on top of it now, I'm telling you. He's been away for a while, and now he's, he's on top of it. Oh, it's only 450 miles from your house, Doug. That's a hop, skip, and a jump. Remember, this is a Canadian speaking. That's a whole that day's 200, drive. 275 miles just to go to a local store. Local store. Yeah, what's your point, Mark? Heather said, hi, Heather. Heather says she's a Canadian redneck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Used to be a Virginian redneck. Ruby's oh. got a demo up to this life, by the way. I do. He's 485 miles away. 
Uh, yeah, I was about to say that. It's probably about 385 miles away, and uh, just going to get there in an hour. Yeah, come on over and join me tonight using the Easy Wood tools. I joke, he said to Ruby once today. It's at the local Lee Valley store. I jokingly said to Ruby once, if we fly over, him and I fly over, stay at her place, we could go visit Lewis, Gondike Grassman. Ruby said, yeah, if you want to drive for 27 hours. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Canada's a wide open country, I'll tell you what. It, it's big. Oh, yeah. Lucy's asking, and I think this is a serious question. What is the definition of a hill, hillbilly and a redneck? Oh, hey, those are complicated. Something. They're complicated. Um, a hillbilly. The the original thought of hillbilly was someone from the hills, the mountains, a mountain person. Uh, typically, hillbillies did not value education very much. Um, so they had a lot of slang. Um, and still today, people in the mountains. If you're not born there, you ain't one of them, and you never will be. Never will be. I lived in the mountains for over 10 years, and one or two people didn't realize that I had not been there that long. And uh, they thought I was one of them when I was leaving. Hmm. So uh, that See, was an interesting, interesting Mr. Dries has come up with the answer I was going to do. One What's has that? 11 toes, uh, one has 11 fingers, and the other 12. Well, there's that. <laughs> I was trying to give... I was going to say, one has 11 fingers, the other one has 12 toes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Z Zed is put in, a hillbilly is an unf unsophisticated country person originally associated with the Appalachian Mountains. Yes. Which so is what's where a redneck then? Redneck is anyone from the south, really. Um, you don't have from to be the from south, the south. Not necessarily but, the mountains. Right. Um, redneck's a country boy. Very well, country, Okay, yeah. Zed is put in, a redneck is a working class white person. It's a reference to having sunburnt neck from working outside. Yeah. There you yeah. go. I did not know that, Zed. Okay, just to give you a preview. There we go. That looks great, Doug. Oh, nice. yes. I, I love those finials. I really do. One okay. Of these now, that, now that that's been fitted, let's... Uh, here it is. I'm trying to find my sanding sealer, not my spray. My spray is just about empty. I got to reorder some. But I got plenty of loose. Right. Alex, Alex is asking Ruby, where's your demo, Ruby? Okay, it's a live demo at the um, Windsor, Ontario, Lee Valley store. I take it it's not being filmed or put out live? No, unfortunately. Okay. And it's mainly no, to introduce people to the Easy Wood tools and how easy they are to use and some of the applications that you can use the tools for. The other way to define between a hillbilly and a redneck is what they drink and where they drink it. That's yeah. true. The hillbilly will drink moonshine on his front porch or as sitting in the back of his pickup truck. Yep. A redneck will drink Bud Light at a local bar <laughs> or, or, or or in the tailgate of his back of his pickup. That's right. And I'm not being derogatory because I no. lived in the States for 10 years and I class myself as a redneck. Yeah. My son very readily calls himself a redneck. Yeah, right of it. I used to hunt and fish. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rednecks do. That's, hunting and fishing is... is uh, Mandatory. If you're going to be a redneck, you've got to hunt and or, well, hunt and fish. You can't, fish, yeah. Yeah, you can't leave anything out. You live off the land or you learn to live off the land. You may not fully live off the land, but you learn to. I have at least one dog. 
Well, it's a simple life, but it's also a rewarding one. Sure, sure. It's a simple way of living, um, not really caring about society very much. Um, a lot of kids who live in the country and will readily call themselves rednecks now love to mud bog and all those kinds of things. They love a storm to come through. So they can go find a field that's all muddy and just spend the day trying to get their truck stuck in the mud. And rednecks do play the banjo. No, no, the other way around. Hill, hillbillies play the banjo, rednecks play the guitar. <laughs> well, they both do. <laughs> Alex thinks he's a red belly. Red, red belly? If, if you're talking about the movie, Mark, they weren't rednecks. Oh, no, they were hillbillies. No, no, no. The, the ones that played the banjos, they were probably hillbillies. The guy who played the guitar, I believe, was a lawyer. He was oh, yeah, definitely not a redneck. Talking about, uh, oh, what's Deliverance. the name of that movie? Yes, Deliverance. Deliverance. One of my one of my favorite lines when I saw that movie. I'll only give you the first part of it. You most of you know the rest of it, but the first part of the line says, "Hey boy." Hey, boy, can you... Wayne knows where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Stop there. Yeah, we'll, we'll not go there. Nah. Nah. It took me a long time after I saw the movie to realize what, they were, what they were asking about. That's going there. Stop it. Yeah, I like dueling banjos. That That's a great tune. Yes, that, yes. To hear, to hear, uh, mm hmm. Well, Glenn Campbell and what was the other fellow's name? Steve Martin. Um, no, Steve Martin. No, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Um, that's a fantastic bench up there. Oh, absolutely. Steve, um, uh, Glenn Campbell and the guy from Hee Haw, Roy Clark, they did it oh, on the yeah. cars. Well, they've done it on banjos as well, but to hear those two, their rendition, phenomenal. Those are two of the best guitar players. In fact, Roy Clark was, yeah, well, Chet Clark, Atkins was good. Chet was very good. Yeah, Ch Chisky Wood Creations has said he's Old East and North Carolina redneck and proud of it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sure you're not a Tar Heel. You know, there's all these other names uh, for something similar. <laughs> North Carolina, you got the Tar Heels. When I lived in Virginia, we were close to Manassas. Uh, hold on. That's the compressor, by the way. Yep. I started to say it's my lunch, but no, it's the compressor. That's just a nice little piece of cherry. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. If I find my chuck key, now I do still have some cleaning up to do, tenons to take off, and that kind of thing. But basically, oh, you two have been like you, mate. I have to keep approving all your comments now. Yeah, yeah, I do as well. Uh, yeah. But Zed has said, uh, redneck, redneck work, he ought to. As in, he ought to give us biscuits with his gravy. <laughs> that, that really looks nice, Doug. Get it up here where it's you actually can really see. nice. There we go. Yes. Got the yeah. uh, the forest green bottom. This is the uh, uh, chameleon color uh, on on the finial with a cherry lid. Just a nice little box. Yeah, I tell you, I, I love the contrast between the the green and the cherry. That yeah. works really well. That's, yeah. Left the just a little bit of the really pear. No, that there looks great. Yeah, pretty well got a straight angle there. That's that's just a little bit of rise to that lid. Uh, like I said, that's it's pear is the bowl, the bowl, the lid is cherry, which gives you some nice color there. When that gets a little more polish on it, it'll it'll look uh, really good. And of course that that finial. 
I'll get that finial where you love see those it. Finials. I love those finials, Doug. The the uh, spiral ribbon. I've done a, a short video on it, and they really are not hard to make. Um, they look terrific, and they have that wow factor. Uh, people look at that and say, "How in the world?" Well, if you actually spend a few minutes to watch a video, you see it's not very hard. Um, most of it's done with a drill, so <laughs> it's it can't be too hard. But anyway, that's it, folks. I, I appreciate you coming along and joining us today as we turn the hashtag week bowl, a Christmas-inspired candy bowl, sweet bowl, if you say it very like nice Steve bowl. does. <laughs> all right. Oh, all right. Works. Did we answer all the questions that were out there? Yeah, I think so. There's, there's, been, there's been a few jokes and stuff coming in, but um, we gave up on them. <laughs> uh well it, it is uh and we can uh well i was looking for something to put under here so it'll sit there we go use a couple of pin blanks out of work there we go i really um, like that i like the shape and the form of the whole piece well thank you yeah. thank you just a, a very simple bowl we'll we look at just the bowl by itself. It, it is very simple. I will take that nub off the bottom and and basically just clean up the tendon. I'll, I'll make it a, into a foot. And then the lid, just a, a slightly domed lid that fits down in to a small tenon. So you got just a small ring of pear. Then you have the, the cherry and then the finial. I still, I still think it should have been a wood turner's fit so the kids can't get at the candy. <laughs> well, then the the <laughs> finial gets broke, so you know. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I'd get frustrated and throw it probably. <laughs> I I like a wood turner's fit. I can do them. I've done a lot of them, uh, especially after Jimmy Clues told me the secret. Um, <laughs> it's really easy once you know the secret. If you make that. Uh, the uh, recess wall flat and the side of the tenon, you make it kind of diamond shaped. It works beautifully, beautifully. So easy. So anyway, if we've answered all the questions, if there's nothing else, we're going to call it, call it a day. Yeah, you, a, you've got some, you've got some very nice comments coming in there, Doug. Well, thank you everybody. I do appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. And like I always say, if it keeps you out of the pool halls, it's worth doing. So with that, I'll, let me uh, switch over to here. Then I can click on that, and I can click on that, and everybody can come in, and we can all say bye bye. Good nice. night. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye. Hope to see you again next week. There we go.